Hello everyone, and um, welcome to a new Let's Play. I'm kind of putting uh, Crusader Kings 2 aside as kind of like a side LP now, because I I know I, I'm really, really bad with these kinds of things, but I've, I've, I've been playing this game, Darkest Hour, a lot. And so this is going to be my new Paradox Let's Play, and you know... It'll probably be a more action-packed one, as action-packed as this game could get. Anyway, um, but this is not Vanilla Darkest Hour, as you can probably tell, because you can see the Mexican Empire and the Confederate States in 1936. This is a mod called the Bonaparte Legacy, and I'll explain more of it when we get into the game, because you'll see all the countries, I'll be able to explain it all. I'm going to be doing 1936, not 1914. Um, maybe people like this series. Uh, no, no, not like literal, le legitimate like. I'm not whoring for likes. I mean, like, if people enjoy the series, um, maybe I'll do uh, 1914, probably French Empire, trying to kind of chill this off. But this mod is. It's it's a rev relatively new mod. The 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 latest version is one point uh or zero point four or something. It's a very 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 alpha mod, and I love it. It like you you might be asking Georgie, why don't you do Kaiser Reich? It's so much better. It's so much more well done. Well, the thing is, the thing is, this is this game has so much potential. In my opinion, in my heart, I believe it has the potential to rival Kaiserreich if it is given the time and the effort that Kaiserreich is given. And, and, and the Kaiserreich devs are even helping out with this. I mean, like, you know, it's, it's not like it's competition. But this, I think, is is it's a great mod. I like the story. I like the I, I think the, the countries have a lot of potential. And the only real issues are some balancing issues, some, you know, events broken, and stuff like it, There's bugs, but they're not completely game-breaking. There's some game-breaking bugs, though. Um, and there's not many events and stuff, but, but remember, it is an alpha. It, it's pretty much an alpha. Now, why am I doing this and not any other mod? Well, not only do I love this mod, but I need to get it out. You know, on YouTube. I am not... I don't even... Like, I've never even spoken to the guy who made this mod. So I'm not advertising this. But I'm trying to get it out onto YouTube. Because I have seen no Let's Plays of this mod. So I want to get this out there. I only have about 64 subscribers. But that's still a bit of people. That's, that's quite a bit of people if you really look at it. So I'm going to get this game out there. So if any of you are Darkest Hour fans, any of you play Darkest Hour... You can look at this and decide for yourself if it's a good game. I personally love it, and we'll talk about the scenario when we get in there. But we will be talk, we will be playing as the nation of national France. So I'd like to welcome you to let's play Ky uh, Darkest Hour, the Bonaparte Legacy, as Nazi France. Now I I know it's just France. But I will continue to refer to it as Nazi France. We're going to look at our things. We're just going to do normal. I was considering easy, but I'm not going to not gonna be a pussy about it. If I might lose... Let me tell you something. I might lose the Second World War. If I do, I lose it. Moving on. I'm not going to reload or anything. I'm not allowed to reload. That is the rule of this Let's Play. I cannot reload if I lose the war. Now, something completely catastrophic happens. Or, like, no, no, no. Like, something, you know, like, not necessarily my fault or not necessarily something I could just roll with, I guess. I don't really know what would qualify as a good thing to reload with. So we're not even going to talk about that. Um, but if I lose World War Two and I get annexed by the Germans, game over, let's play over. You know, I'm not going to be a pussy, I'm not going to reload, I'm not going to fight the war again. I'm going to fight the war like like, like a person in the World War would fight. You know, you, you fight for for your survival, or your freedom, or your, your empire, and then if you lose, you don't just get back up and try again. You, you're over, you're done. You've been overthrown, you know. Just a brief, brief overview 
of the uh, the the options that I'm using. Difficulty normal, AI aggressiveness normal, speed I'm going to be changing a lot. Share countries off, obviously there's no it, not multiplayer. So um, auto save monthly. Use counters off, and everyone can start war on. End date. Use scenario end date. It's going to be like 63, so it doesn't really matter. Full IC takeover, I'm going to leave that off. But tech team takeover, I'm going to leave on. So we'll go with those. And we'll start. And I'll sort of key you in, uh, let you in on certain like key elements of sort of the plot of the story um as we get in these loading screens can take a while it took me a while when i was loading in uh just with fraps in the background so if this takes like forever to get through then i'll just cut the the loading screens if there's a big like panic about it or there's big um problems with it Dr. Pepper, the drink of the National Socialist Front. Okay. So, real quick, I'm just going to give a base overview of the story, Bonaparte Legacy. It is 1936. Um, in 1861, rather, the Confederates, who you see over here across the across the pond... The Confederates and the French met on a boat. Uh, as soon, like around the time, you know, the trench affair when, uh, or the Trent affair, rather, sorry, where the Confederates were trying to get the British and the French on their side because they were selling them cotton. The French and the Confederates met on the French ship, the Hermione, I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, and they had, they were having talks and stuff, and then a U.S. ship, uh, the crew was a little overzealous, and they shot at the, uh, at the ship, because they were afraid that the war, that the French were going to come in. So they shot at the ship, and this really angered the French government. So the French sent, um, the army over, and the Franco-Confederate forces proved too much for the Union. The force of the French Empire and the Confederate States of America was too much. I mean... That's pretty realistic, to be honest. Um, France isn't renowned for its success, but I mean, if if the Confederates proved to be a challenge, I mean, the French could have probably persuaded it in the manner of Confederate victory. But you know, whatever you want to incorporate into that uh, likelihood is is really up to debate. Um, so after this, the Confederate States gets its independence. The U.S. Uh, sort of kind of backs out of just just the world in general. Um, and the French intervened in Mexico. They set up the Mexican Empire. Blah, 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 blah. Germany never forms until after World War One. It stays Prussia. Britain and Prussia ally. Um, Britain, Prussia, and Russia ally in World War One against France and Austria. And I think the Ottoman Empire. Uh, and, uh, oh, and Italy joins the uh, the Anglo-Prussian alliance as well. And then, basically, they fight France and Austria after Austria is accused of assassinating uh, Wilhelm II of uh, Prussia. And they fight out World War I, you know. And eventually, the French lose. And the French kind of become the Germans of the story. The French lose... They get uh, what's called the Treaty of Strasbourg, which basically is their Treaty of Versailles, and it means that France will pay heavy war reparations. They'll accept uh, all the responsibility for the war, even though the Austro-Hungarians started it in this universe. Blah 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 blah. You know, the World War Two, like German kind of thing. And this angers the French, and, you know, they go through, you know, stages. Uh, the Emperor Louis the First gets overthrown. He's replaced with uh, Georges Clem uh, Clemenceau, and uh, he becomes the president of the French Republic. And um, later, um, through all this time, you have French Hitler here, Eugene de L'Oncle. 
is that Saint Delanco? He becomes the Prime Minister of France. Now, Jean the Third, I don't understand this because I think he's supposed to be the King of France. How France became a kingdom, I'm not 100% sure. Um, maybe it was a constitutional monarchy when it became a, dem a democracy. I don't know. <coughs> Sorry. Um, but he is the head of state. But the real power is in Eugene de Um, Real quick, I'm just gonna... Just my slider. Make us total authoritarian right. Um, now, there's so much to describe, and, and, and I, we'll talk about it over time, but the main things are, like, the U.S. has a socialist revolution in the 20s, it's either the 20s or the 30s, and in this, you know, the Confederate snatch up a couple, couple, uh, states, and, you know, grabs Alaska, Russia has their civil war, you know, standard stuff, like I told you, the, the story is at 100%, you know, like, completely crazy, uh, Japan's democratic, and then China's the fascist one, other than that, there's not really that much different from the real world, um, but like I said, it's, it's under development, you know, there are all sorts of things can happen, so, for the future, we are Nazi France, we have been, uh, shamed and spit on by the British, the Germans, the Russians, the Italians, you know, and we are tired of this. Um, and we're going to uh, restore France's former glory, which means reclaiming the empire. And I'll tell you exactly our strategy for getting that territory, and it's precisely what territories we're going to keep, what countries we're going to release, when we get closer to World War II. This, this first part is going to be filled with explaining, historical background, and... Um, getting IC in order, and producing troops for the French army. Because World War II is going to be long and bloody. We need troops. We need men from all over France to fight for us. Against the Germans, the British, and whoever stands in our way. So I welcome you to Let's Play Darkest Hour, the Bonaparte Legacy of Nazi France. Now let's begin. Um... So what we're gonna do first is I'm just when when I get in, into uh, games of the I I kind of just kind of just like all the auto thing like this could help you know all these troops and the ships but I'm gonna uh, this might be a noob thing to do but I'm just gonna cancel all these because I want to kind of make sure my armies are reinforced have supply oh my Jesus Christ. Why I ever agreed for the phone base to be put in my bedroom, where my computer is, where I record Let's Plays, I'll never know. But, um, we're just gonna kind of make sure our consumer goods are good so our people are happy. Um, we have enough, uh, supplies for our troops and enough reinforcements for said troops. Um, I'm not gonna really focus on building troops until the upgrades are done. Principally because I want to have the most up-to-date army... Uh, now, as World War II rolls in, and we start having to kind of, kind of make troops real fast, you know, in order to, uh, to keep our growing war machine, uh, strong, as strong as it can get, I'll start relaxing a little bit on that, uh, aspect of the, um, of sort of the IC. I'll probably stop trying to make sure my army's 100% up to date, because it'll be a little difficult, and by a little difficult, I mean very difficult, um, but I'm going to make troops of, I'm, I'm gonna try right here, you're seeing me, um, I'm getting sort of all the technologies that I can get with all these tech teams, um, so that, uh, we could, we could have a, uh, an army that knows how to hit hard, an army that, you know, they, they know what they're doing, and a professional 
large military is what we're going with with Nazi France. Um, let me just finish doing this.